All right, so with the passage of the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package, there were some good parts of that bill that we liked, like the child tax credit and stuff that cuts child poverty in half, even though it's temporary and doesn't really get to the root issues of it. But there were also some things that were missing from this package. And the main thing that comes to everybody's mind is the $15 minimum wage. It's an overwhelmingly popular policy supported across the board in many polls, showing even Republicans overwhelmingly support it. Um, but yet it was taken out of this package. And it was taken out of the package because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris basically used the Senate parliamentarian, who nobody had even fucking heard of until uh, this came up, um, but used the Senate parliamentarian as a scapegoat for them not wanting to fight for the $15 minimum wage. Um, the S Senate parliamentarian essentially said, well, this isn't pertinent to the process of budget reconciliation, so I don't think it can be included. Their opinion is entirely irrelevant, by the way. Kamala Harris, as the president of the Senate, uh, had the ability to completely steamroll past the Senate parliamentarian, but simply chose not to. They prioritized this archaic ruling of the parliamentarian over uh, getting rid of starvation wages in this country, because that's what they are. That's what the minimum wage is. Now, uh, if minimum wage had kept pace, with productivity and inflation since around 1968, which is when it was at its peak relatively, then today it would be around 22 to $25 an hour. So $15 an hour is the fucking compromise. I don't wanna hear any pushback against that. It's absolutely embarrassing that this is even a conversation, but it looks like through this next bill that Democrats are going to be pushing, the infrastructure package, that some Democrats are going to try this entire process again and try to have it included in this package. So here's what Chuck Schumer had to say about it. Chuck Schumer eyes a second shot at raising the minimum wage through reconciliation. Democrats capitulated to a ruling by a Senate staffer, the body's parliamentarian, the first time around. So Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is considering putting a $15 minimum wage into the next reconciliation package, which will be for, uh, focused on infrastructure multiple sources familiar with the New York senators thinking told The Intercept. So Senate Democrats attempted to include the wage hike in President Joe Biden's COVID relief package, but the Senate parliamentarian ruled it was out of order and the Senate Democrats allowed that ruling to stand. And then obviously they tried to add it in with an additional vote that Bernie put forward and that failed as well with eight Democrats voting down the $15 minimum wage. But the key hinge there that everything was stopped in its tracks was Joe Biden and Kamala Harris deciding they wanted to listen to the Senate parliamentarian. Again, which is a completely 100% advisory opinion. This is an unelected advisory opinion that you can just completely ignore. So why would you not ignore that? Joe Biden ran on the $15 minimum wage. He said he supported the $15 minimum wage. Kamala Harris has said she supported the $15 minimum wage. It's, again, a policy supported by overwhelmingly the Democratic and independents, um, as well as, in some polls, a majority of Republicans. So there's literally no excuse whatsoever to not pass the $15 minimum wage through one of these budget reconciliation packages. Again, as long as you have the filibuster in place, you have to include it in one of these other uh, must-pass uh, budget reconciliation process bills because you're not going to get 60 votes on that. You're not going to get 10 Republicans to join you on a standalone $15 minimum wage bill. So it has to be included in one of these must pass bills. And so here's the opportunity that we have in front of us. So I made previous videos that was criticizing the squad and criticizing Bernie Sanders and calling them out for not using the leverage that they had at their disposal. So what is the leverage that they have at their disposal? Well, a lot of the focus has been recently through all of these negotiations on Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, right? Because they're the conservative, they're the moderate Democrats, even though their positions are not moderate by any stretch of the imagination. They are the conservative wing of the Democratic Party. Why do they have so much leverage? They have leverage because Joe Manchin is willing to go to Joe Biden and say, you know what? I might side with the Republicans on this. I might vote down this bill if you don't do this, this, and this. And it is that threat of Joe Manchin not supporting a must-pass bill, and when I say must-pass, I mean this is a key tenant part of Joe Biden's, uh, his strategy for, you know, producing his presidency and his legacy and actually moving forward with le legislation. He has to pass, just like he had to pass the COVID relief package, he has to pass this next infrastructure package. So there is an enormous amount of leverage that can be wielded by anybody who is in the same position as Joe Manchin. So Bernie Sanders, for example, just like Joe Manchin is one senator who could block this entire thing from happening through the process of budget reconciliation, Bernie Sanders could also in the exact same way block the bill from happening entirely. So the key difference here is obviously that leftist politicians tend to you know, weigh some of the more positive things in these bills and say, well, do I really wanna take this fight? Do I really wanna block all of this other relief from going through just for this other portion of the bill? And the answer to that needs to be, Yes, you have to be willing to kill the hostage. You have to be willing 
to kill the bill in this sense if your leverage is going to actually mean something, right? So some of the mistakes that were made by like Ro Khanna, for example, uh, in the last round of negotiations, he said, I want the $15 minimum wage to be included. He wrote that letter along with, you know, AOC, the squad, a bunch of other uh, House progressives. And they wrote a letter to Joe Biden saying, we want the $15 minimum wage to be included in the COVID relief package. And then Ro Khanna went on all of the media outlets and said, yeah, I want it to be in it, but I'll vote for it even if it's not. <laughs> you know, you just gave up all of your leverage. You just gave up 100% of your leverage. So what they need to do, okay, this is really not that complicated. And again, this is a fight we can win because the $15 minimum wage is overwhelmingly supported by the American people. So what the squad needs to do, what Bernie Sanders needs to do is get a group of, uh, get a group of them together and say, this is what we want to be included in this bill, whether it's, you know, raising the amount that they're going to spend on infrastructure or whether it's something like the fit. This can be applied to anything that they want to be included in the bill. But I'm referencing specifically the $15 minimum wage. This is how you get it passed. You get a group of them together and you say, we are not going to vote for this package, period, end of story, unless this, this, this and this is included. And among that could be the $15 minimum wage, could be, you know, Bernie Sanders proposal to lower the Medicare eligibility age to 50 uh, or even lower than that. Um, among that could be, again, increased spending on climate infrastructure. So there's literally no limit to how much leverage that they have in this moment. Obviously, you have to use that leverage, say you're not going to vote for the package, and then begin negotiations with, you know, the Joe Mansions of the world and Joe Biden, etc., and some of these more conservative aspects. But that's what needs to happen. You have to have the squad come together as a unified voting bloc and draw hard lines in the sand and be willing to take that flack, be willing to take that fight. It is 100% a fight that we can and will win if you're willing to take it. There will be media backlash. Yeah, but guess what? There's always going to be fucking media backlash, okay? There's always going to be that factor of the establishment cracking down on you, the media cracking down on you for holding these positions. You have to be willing to take those fights and be willing to go on all the media outlets and say, I'm supporting what Joe Biden ran on, the $15 minimum wage. I'm supporting an overwhelming, uh, an overwhelmingly popular policy that is supported by the majority of the people. I'm doing my job in representing my constituents. It's Joe Manchin that's not doing his job in representing his constituents. We saw that poll where 63% of West Virginia voters supported the $15 minimum wage. We've seen recent polling that shows that Kirsten Cinema's popularity in Arizona tanked, absolutely tanked, after her little cutesy thumbs down vote on the $15 minimum wage. So we know the politics of this situation. We know the economics of this situation. We know uh, how much this is desperately needed by millions of people. So get the fucking policy passed, get it included in this infrastructure package. If the $15 minimum wage is not included in this infrastructure package, then I'm really losing faith on some of these squad members because it's a clear point of leverage that they can use to get this policy passed. It is a core tenant of the progressive agenda right now. It is absolutely embarrassing that we just got rolled over by Joe Manchin and a fucking Senate parliamentarian on this policy. That cannot happen again.